All right, you guys, I am so, so, I'm so excited for this one. So I have somebody who's super special who we have met over social media. We have connected, we have bonded. I bonded, if I can talk. I already love her so much. She's got the best heart and she just does everything on her platform just to show what adoption is. She's an adoptive mama. She's beautiful. Her babies are to die for. I so want to meet them in person one day because I just want to squeeze them all. My kids are obsessed with them every time I'm like, look how cute. Anyway, so I have Caitlin and I'm super duper excited to hear more of her to tell her story because you see people, you know, social media that way, but I'm really excited to hear her full story and see it that way because, you know, you see blips of people's lives, but I'm super excited to have her share. So I will go ahead and turn the time over to her. So go ahead, Caitlin. Okay, so my name is Caitlin. Um, my husband and I, we have three really cute kids, um, like you said, and they're all adopted. They were all adopted as babies. Um, so like a lot of couples that have adopted, my husband and I experienced years and years of infertility, and that's what ultimately led us to adopt. Um, we were always open to adoption from the very beginning, um, but we just felt like we should pursue fertility treatments first, just because we just didn't want to know what if. I don't know. That was just kind of our thinking at the time. And um, so we did anything and everything that we could. Um, we did all the infertility treatments. We did IVF and our last one ended in a miscarriage. And so that was hard and devastating because we had no more embryos um, and it was really hard. And so at that point, we were kind of at a crossroads and we thought um, we can continue with fertility treatments because our fertility doctors still seemed very hopeful that we could get pregnant and have a successful pregnancy or we can start our adoption papers. And we had already talked to um, some social workers before that miscarriage just because we were still wanting to adopt even if we did have biological children. And um, we decided to, to do both. And so we were gonna continue with fertility treatments and start the adoption process at the same time. And our adoption with our daughter, Josie, just happened so fast. Um, so we started things with our social workers. We got home study approved. We did education classes. And um, what they suggested um, is that we did private adoption. And so we put things out there on social media. We told anybody and everybody we knew that we were trying to adopt. Um, it was the first year that we sent out Christmas cards. This was around Christmas time. And we sent Christmas cards to everybody we knew and put like little cards in there that we were hoping to adopt and just asked anybody because our social workers just told us that they've had a lot of success or a couples had had a lot of success with matching that way just through a connection somehow. And so we, we posted in October and Josie was born in February. So her birth mom messaged me on Instagram. She somehow found my profile or saw our post that we were trying to adopt. And she lives in Pennsylvania, we're in Utah. And so like, there's no connection there. She just somehow saw my post and so I know you've talked about like, I have a following now, but at that time, like only people that followed me were like friends and family. We had like 400 followers. So like the fact that she found us is just, is crazy. It's so crazy to think about how she found us. And so she messaged us and we had two weeks to prepare for Josie coming in. So it was just so, so crazy. It was like the longest two weeks of our life. We're like, is this really happening? And so we would have never met her, obviously, because she just reached out over Instagram. And um, we had proof of pregnancy from her doctor to her attorneys. Like we had everything lined out. Like we're like, this, this has to be true. And so we booked plane tickets and we flew out there and we, we weren't able to meet her until the day that Josie was born. But I was able to meet her birth mom right before Josie was born. And then um, she had a C-section. So she can only let one person in the room with her. So I was in the room with her. I got to watch Josie be born and it was just an amazing moment. So, um, and my husband Reed, he was there with us and we stayed in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania for two weeks after she was born. And that was just a really cool time um, being there with her because it was just the three of us alone and we were able to bond with her and be with her. And um, 
we were excited to bring her back home, obviously, to show her off to all of our friends and family, but just that time alone with her and and we got to spend a little bit more time with her birth mom and getting to know her because, like I said, we didn't meet her until the day she was born. And so it was a really good time. Um, and so we brought Josie home. And after she joined our family, we both just had a really strong impression that adoption was the way that our family was supposed to be built. And we never looked back. We never wanted to pursue fertility treatments. We've never, um, we've never wanted to explore that again. And of course there's other hard things that come with that, just not ever having biological children, but we just knew that this is the way it was supposed to happen. And so, um, so Josie joined our family and then a year later, we just thought maybe we should start the process again. We just, with adoption, you just never know how long it's gonna take. And with Josie, we obviously it happened so fast and we're like, there's no way that we could get that lucky again. Um, and so I think she was just over a year when we posted and um, we had been contacted by several expectant mothers and things didn't work out with several of them. And then, um, then our son, our middle son, Seth's birth mom, she contacted us and she found us through like a mutual friend. A friend told a friend, told a friend that knew her and she reached out to us. So that was more of like a closer connection. And she lives here in Utah. And so we were able to go to doctor's appointments with her. We were able to meet with her. Um, we were able to be there through all of it. And so we had a much closer connection with her because we just had more time. Um, we met her, I think she was like halfway through her pregnancy. And so we were able to go to like the gender reveal ultrasound and just be there through all of it. And so um, it was a different experience just because we were able to get to know her. And so I feel like in a way that made Seth's adoption and his placement harder just because we had that personal connection with her and we knew her and we just knew how hard it was already going through it with Josie's birth mom. I'm sorry, it just makes me emotional. And um, and again, she she let us be there for everything. And uh, it's just so special to us that we were able to experience that with all of our kids' birth moms. But, um, and so she let both of us be there in the delivery room with her, um, which is really cool for my husband because he wasn't there for Josie's. And so he was like, he just was so excited to be there. He got cut the cord, he got experienced all of it. And so it was just like his proud dad moment getting to be there, watch his son being born. And um, and so, yeah, we were there in the hospital with her. She had some family there with her, which was a different experience with um, Josie's birth because she was she didn't have a lot of support. And so, says birth mom, um, she had her parents there and we were just able to meet family, which was really cool. And we later found out that Seth's birth grandpa I guess you could say he was also adopted and so there's like already this adoption story in the family and so we got to hear like his experience um being adopted and finding his birth family and that was really cool to hear that from him and so um backtracking a little bit sorry so a month probably a month and a half to two months before Seth was born Josie's birth mom contacted us and told us that she was pregnant and she wasn't sure if she wanted to place this baby for adoption. Um, and so we were just upfront and honest with her, like, well, we're already matched um, with another baby that's gonna be born here pretty soon, but you know, this is your decision. And, but if, if adoption is what you want, then of course we will, we will take this baby into our home, but this is totally your decision. And so she knew that we were about to have another baby and, um, but then Seth was born and shortly after he was born, then she decided that she wanted him to join our family too. So Seth was born in January and then Miles, which is Josie's half biological sibling was born in May. So Seth was only four months old, which was crazy. It was crazy. And Josie was, she wasn't two when Seth was born and she was barely two when Miles was born. And so we had three kids, two and under, but <laughs> Reed and I, I think it's just because Josie was just such an easy baby and an easy kid that Reed and I was like, 
we can do this. Like, this is going to be so easy. <laughs> now looking back, like we were so dumb thinking that it was going to be so easy because it was just three kids, little kids. It's that's crazy. It was so crazy, but somehow we made it through and we're all still alive. So we must be doing something right. Um, but, um, again, so when Miles was born, um, we had already been through the process with his birth mom and we got to spend more time with her and it was right in the middle of COVID. And so we both couldn't be in the hospital with her. And so they let me be in there with her. We, they let me be there in the operating room. And cause again, she had a C-section and, um, Miles had some complications when he was born. And so he actually had to be in the NICU for a while. And so I think he was five days old when they finally like gave into our pressure and let Reed come into the hospital and meet him, which they initially thought he would have been out before then, but then they finally let Reed come in and meet him because that was just a long wait. And so it was just weird with all the restrictions at the time. And that was when COVID first started. So there was just a lot of unknowns and we had, Seth there with us, but Josie wasn't with us just because of, again, COVID and traveling with a two-year-old and two newborns. We were really nervous about that, and we also just wanted um, their birth mom to be able to focus on the birth and the baby and not have to worry about, you know, meeting Josie and all of that. We just wanted to um, plan a separate visit for all of that, so it went really well, really well, and um, she was able to spend more time with Miles than she did with Josie, just because after we had been through with it and we were comfortable with our relationship with her, we were able to kind of encourage her to do so. And where I think before with Josie, we were scared that if we encouraged that, that she would change her mind. And not that there would be anything wrong with that, but we were just more comfortable with adoption and the situation. We had been through it two times before then. And so um we encouraged her to spend time with him because that's her baby that was her time with him as well and she was able to do so and we brought him home and then we had three kids and um yeah here we are so it, it sounds like it was easy just because it all happened so fast but of course it's not easy and um I'd like to think that our fertility journey helped prepare us for adoption just because that was really hard and really emotional and so was adoption it's really hard and it's really emotional and it just um prepared us for like the emotional roller coaster that the adoption journey takes you on um, but obviously it's so worth it and we know that we're just, just so blessed to have these three beautiful kids in our lives and we just can't imagine life without them it's just it's really weird and hard to think about so it's it's not weird at all. <laughs> no, it's not weird. It's beautiful. Um, so do you have, I'm guessing, yes, open relationships with all these bio moms? You do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I, yeah, yeah so Josie, um Josie and Miles' birth mom, she actually came for Thanksgiving. That was the first time that she was able to see both of the kids since they've been born. And that was a really good visit. Um, we've we've left it open to both of them how much contact they want. Um Josie and Miles' birth mom, she's more open to the communication where Seth's birth mom, I think it's been a little bit harder for her. So she's, she hasn't seen Seth since he's been born, but we've talked to her and um, exchanged pictures and text. Um, so we're just hoping that as maybe as time moves on that she'll be more open to visits or whatever. No, I think, I think that's beautiful. And I know you've heard me talk about it before. That's something that I mean, I know with me, it's a little bit different because I'm international, but I think it's so incredibly beautiful and amazing because I mean, you know, they're your babies. Of course they're yeah. your babies, but like they get to know where they came from. And to me, yeah. that's just so exciting. And I love that because you are mom and dad a hundred percent. I can say that as an adoptee because my mom and dad are my mom and dad, but it's also yeah. just like so awesome that they have that, like they can have yeah. that and be like, you know, so, and I think yeah. that's so wonderful that like. I love that you said the very first adoption nerves because a hundred percent, like anybody going into that, of course, that's nerve wracking. I know my mom expressed that too. Like you don't want that take back, but at the same time, you understand that if that mom makes that decision, but like, I can't even fathom that because there's a couple of people I've interviewed who that's happened to them multiple times and just the heartache and the heartbreak. Um, but I love that you guys 
gained enough like confidence in yourself and trust that like you know during the second time that you know she was able to experience that and but she sounds like I mean she's amazing and she's so grateful for like the opportunity to be able to have such amazing people raise her babies you know what I mean like to just watch that and see that I think that's that's wonderful and and that's one thing that um our education adoption classes changed in us that we were like why would we want this open relationship like with our birth families? This is so weird. Who would want that? And just hearing perspectives of birth parents and adoptees and adoptive parents that have had these open relationships were like, of course, it makes total sense. Like, why wouldn't we want that for our kids? And now that we get to see it, it's just really cool to have that relationship. And it's, they're, they're just family now. It's just an extension of our family and it's just more people to love our kids. So no, I love that. Um, so obviously probably one of the hardest things, what's well, like some hard things. I mean, three, two under three is probably super hard, but like, um, as far as, has there been any like hardships that you could maybe share that somebody else might be going through that you can be like, Oh yeah. Like, um, yeah. So I briefly talked about, um, just how like the infertility stuff still affects us. Um, even though after we adopted kids, I think that's just one thing that you think like, oh, we adopted these children. Um, That's just nothing we have to worry about anymore. Um, But it still can be hard, but you can still find beauty in the grief too. It's like, um, we have this beautiful family to raise. And of course, we're so grateful for that, but um, it's still okay recognizing that the other part of it is hard too. So, and I think that just might help me more empathetic to what our kids are going through. Like, yes, they're so grateful that they're adopted, but I mean, you understand that they're also still this birth family that they miss and don't get to know as well. So no, yeah, no. And that, I mean, it makes me, makes me super emotional because I have lots of friends and family who are affected by infertility and I can't imagine. Cause I mean, I have my own babies, but I'm also, you know, adopted so I can see both sides, but like, it's just, it's, I get the yearning of, you know, you, you want people to look like you and that goes into it with infertility too. Like, you know, not that you don't love your baby so much, but it's just like, for me, it's full circle. It's both sides. I can see both sides, you know, there's, it's, it can be both that way. So, um, do you have any advice for like, I know you share the slots, but like adoptive parents on anything, agencies, anything like that you can think of? Um, so yeah, we didn't use an agency. We did private adoption and I recommend it to anybody and everybody we know, um, just because I feel like it's more personal that we had to have this one-on-one communication with their birth parents. We didn't have to like have this middleman agency that went through everything. And, um, of course the money is a huge aspect of it. You save money, you know, exactly where your money is going towards. Um, we can help the birth parents directly. They can talk to them about their needs and um so private adoption i know it's different in every state that not every state allows it but um a lot of people that we've talked to live in utah and it's totally doable and we use utah adoption specialists so those of you that do live in utah look up utah adoption specialists because they're so helpful and they're so informative and they're just great no and i think that's i can't even talk awesome and i feel like private adoption you see it a lot more, which I think is beautiful because for me, I feel like it's more intimate than going through an agency. Yeah. Not that going, going through an agency isn't bad, but I like, I like that. I feel like there's a lot more intimacy, the whole mm-hmm. process, which is just and, beautiful. Yeah. And I have a lot of people ask, like, I, I don't have a following. I can't do it. And like I said, when we adopted Josie, I had no following. It was just our friends and family and those connections are still made and they still happen. And I've seen it with multiple friends. So it's, you just never know how those connections can be made and you never know until you try. So it's scary and it's hard to put yourself out there and you feel so vulnerable doing so. It feels like you're just kind of selling yourself, but obviously we wouldn't change anything because that's what brought us our three kids. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about social media too. I see so many people helping their friends promote, Hey, we're, we want to adopt and this and that, and this and that, like you said, you know, you, you don't have to have a huge following to do it because your post could catch wind of one person that has a million people and bam, you know what I mean? Then it's just, it spreads like a wildfire and you don't even need that. Like just, if you're getting the word out there. Yeah. You just never know who's going to see it. Right. I love that. I love that advice so much. Um, is there. 
anything else that you can think of that you want to share right now? I'm trying to think if there's anything else I have for you. That's the thing. I need to ask more because I know not everybody has seen you. I follow you. So I know like <laughs> to what goes on, but um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. One thing. Oh, one thing I do really, really love about you is that you take the time to immerse your children. And I feel like that is a lot of what's coming like watching your hair journey with Josie is absolutely beautiful because like you're, you're learning and I just love it. Like I have a nephew who's black and my sister does everything. He's now 15, but she takes him to like a special barber and she's like, it's worth it for him to be in that and to have that. And so I think that's, I just, I love that. That's one thing I totally love about you is that you just like with all your babies. Cause, um, I know you mentioned in your stories the other day, but Seth, uh-huh. What's, what's his nationality does he have so, yeah he's hispanic his birth dad is mexican so okay yeah he's oh they're all so stinking cute i just like want to come squeeze them all like seriously they're just all so cute <laughs> they're so cute yeah. um I'm trying yeah to we're know. trying we're not perfect at it but it's it's all it's all a learning experience all of it so we're yeah. we're trying and i love it i love it so much one other thing did you have to wait a lot. I'm trying to think back because you did tell me. Did you have to wait a long time on any of the other babies? I know Josie was pretty fast, but yeah, Josie was four months, and I think Seth was nine months from when we started to when he was born. And then obviously Miles was an added extra surprise. So, so what advice would you give to people who have to play the waiting game? Like, um, I know it can be hard, and we know couples that have waited, but you just do it. And when it all works out, it's like that wait never happened. Cause I mean, we didn't have to wait too long from when Josie was born, but it was after years and years of infertility that we'd been waiting for our kids and, um, her adoption happened fast, but not after years of waiting. And it's like when she was finally born and when you first hold her, hold your baby in your arms, it's like, none of that matters. Like it's just, it's all worth it. So even no matter how hard it is, it's just all worth it. No, I love that. The waiting game is hard. I feel like it. And I love that you incorporated that in that is like, cause you did, I mean, you guys had that struggle for a really long time. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's so beautiful. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else, anything else that you feel on your heart to share, you guys need to follow Kaylin. I'm not even kidding you because she's just so sweet. She's so wholesome. She's real my favorite thing about her is she's always trying to learn like in this community. And I feel like that's even me as an adoptee. There's so many different new things for me to learn too, even though I'm older, but like, she's awesome. She's amazing. Give her love. Be nice to her. If you're not nice to her. Like I have her back. <laughs> and that's one thing that I love about sharing as, as, as you do is a lot of people just don't know much about adoption and how you adopt and um, just all of it. And so I just love learning as well as like educating others like this is how we adopted this is what it's like it's not just like hey we want a baby we'll take that one because a lot of people just ask us well why do you adopt black babies and it's like here's a baby that needed a home and we have a home to have or a home for a baby and lots of love to give and that's just that's just how it happens no and and I love it I absolutely love it well and not only that but she reached out to you guys you know what I mean it wasn't like oh hey we chose her it's she yeah. found you guys and fell in love with you guys and it just happened yeah. and I and just that's exactly yeah you know, that's exactly what I tell people like well why'd you adopt a black baby because their birth mom chose us so. right, right. Yeah. yeah it's so true so I love it no but seriously like just thank you for being I just love like the adoptive parents that you guys are because it's just it makes my heart happy because like I've told you before, I feel like there's this crazy, this is why I do these because there's this stigma that I've noticed with adoption. So many angry people on all sides, which I'm not dis- disregarding their anger because I get it. But at the same time, I also want people to see that there's hard, but there's so much beautiful that comes with it as well, because it's just really what it is. So anything yeah. else you want to share? I can't think of anything on the spot. <laughs> It's hard. No, no, you're totally good. So, well, thank you. I'm so glad we finally got to meet up and thank you for taking some time out of your night to do this for me. And I like, so, so, so appreciate it. And like I said, go follow her guys. She's so much fun and her kids are to die for. And her husband is like my husband and cooks all the time. So go look for (laughs) yummy recipes. Cause like every time I'm like, Ben, we got to try that. Ben, we got to try that (laughs) every time your husband cooks something. So seriously, but thank you, Caitlin, for joining me tonight. And I really, really, really appreciate it. Of course.